What other parameters are we mismeasuring in the operating room and elsewhere? I can come up with one, which is peak airway pressure, and having our anesthesia machines never give us what inspiratory resistance is. Resistance is the parameter we care about, and the uh, peak pressure is the artifact of, of the inspiratory, expiratory time, et cetera. Are there other things like that? And by the way, your talk was brilliant. Well, other things we're missing in the operating room. Again, I must, uh, I must bow to my, my lack of, uh, of detailed knowledge of the operating room, OK? But what, what, what I will say from, from an ICU perspective is that the work with esophageal measurements now is very exciting, right? And if we could have a, a, um, a routinely easy esophageal measurement, I think that would be wonderful, right? Uh, it, not just for child's pulmonary pressure, but for detecting missynchronizations and things like that. It would be wonderful. Um, and of course, NAVA uh, goes a long way to solving that again. In, 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 uh, but it's not pressure, then it's electricity, but that goes a long way to solving that. Um, and I think in the operating room there, if one had escophagal measurements, and now I'm talking measurements, not parameters, I'm sorry, so I'm getting away from your question. But then we could really see the transpulmonary pressures in patients' Trendenberg, right, uh, and high abdominal pressures, and, and, and really be um, uh, looking at setting pressures appropriately. Uh, I know from my colleagues who study pain that high abdominal pressures surgically are associated with poor pain outcomes subsequently. And it raises the question for me, what what inspiratory pressures should we give to push the diaphragm away in obese patients without generating huge abdominal pressures? Right? There are so many aspects that require compromise here, and, and so little we know uh, without the proper measurements. Now, that, that's an aside in many respects, because what we've been trying to do is make the most of the measurements we have without introducing complexity. And those two are in many respects against each other, but also quite complementary, because we need to do both. Uh, uh, and I hope that answers your question. It answers the question, and the major reason to ask it is for the manufacturers and researchers in this room to recognize that we're missing so many things. And once we start collecting them, as you have been, there are incredible things we should be able to do. Any other questions or comments? I've, yeah, I've got a quick question. So. The simple models, the physiologic models that you based your complete system on, how many of those were collected under conditions of anesthesia? We, we just saw from the previous talk that anesthesia changes a lot of this data. So were those models taking the, the effects of anesthesia into account? Uh, and would you have to redo those underlying physiologic models to make this valid in the OR? Uh, I don't believe so, and let me let me try and provide a justification. But it is a belief, of course, right? Uh, I mean, the uh, we compared against multiple inert gas elimination techniques. Of course, we don't have the richness. Of course, we can't represent all bimodal distributions. We can represent some in certain circumstances and things like that. But I mean, pulmonary shunt, uh, whether it be caused by um, a reduction in FRC due to anesthesia or whether it be caused due to ARDS, in its uh, physiological presentation of the relationship between inspired and arterial oxygenation is, is, a, is a similar thing, right? Now, that doesn't mean that models as those we're proposing improve our physiological understanding. They don't. They are trying to take the physiological understanding that was there and apply it. So we're not looking to understand new things. We're tidying up, right? We're trying to bring what was there together and do something creative with it. So I don't believe so. In a similar way, acid-base, I mean, the pK of, uh, of uh, binding of CO2 to, and bicarbonate, um, I don't know if that's affected by anesthetic gases. I can't imagine so, right? But I don't know, right? Nor do I know whether the pKs of the other reactions that we built into our model are. One of the things that, this, that we try to do is we try to make sure that consistency of data is the thing that drives things. So if the data is not consistent, we don't provide advice. So if there's something wrong, you don't get advice. Um, for example, if the patient wakes up and we can't simulate the end tidal CO2 anymore, then clearly we don't understand the patients. The models are wrong. 
and therefore we need a new blood gas. So we request the blood gas with the system because now we need it to understand the patient. So the system is utilizing these kind of places where error may occur to ask for new information. And if we don't fit the data, we don't provide advice. One more question. Thank you very much. I enjoyed your talk. Very interesting. It follows on, having a clinical support system follows on from uh, letting people make it easy for people to do the right thing. It's excellent, really. I just wondered if you um, gave decisions that were a bit broader than uh, increasing the oxygen and that sort of thing. Um, one of your patients had a haemoglobin of 6.1 on there. And I would say a thing there to consider is giving the patient some blood. And so uh, from your blood gas results, would you... Uh, consider giving extending the advice to that sort of area. I, I like that question very much because it allows me to broaden out the philosophy. Right? One of the functions we have in the system is that we simulate mixed venous oxygen uh, concentration uh, and we do it from an ideal body weight guest cardiac output that, that is adjusted at the start of when you set the patient up. Right? We measure VO2, we measure hemoglobin, so we know everything else except the cardiac output. That means if we simulate a mixed venous oxygen saturation of 20, the cardiac output has to be wrong. So we say, the cardiac output is wrong, estimate something else. My point here is if you start building on physiology, it naturally expands because it all has to be consistent, right? So you can tie a, a bag around the, physio the, the respiratory physiology, but you still get information about the cardiac system, right? And then you start looking at heart-lung interaction and all the delta P ups and delta P downs, and, and, and you can move into volume status, and if you build m models of thoracic pressure and how they affect things linked together, right? And, and I think that our information systems of the future in ICU should be physiologically based, linking these systems and giving us alarms and advice when patients' physiological state changes. Um, so thank you very much, Stephen. Fantastic talk. <laughs>